Hello and welcome back to the David67 Celtic News YouTube channel. Uh, second video of the day, the second video uh, going to be a post-match review of the Celtic women's sides 3-1 win away from home at Hibs in Edinburgh yesterday afternoon in the SWPL with uh, results elsewhere that now puts Celtic four points behind the biggest rivals Rangers going into next Sunday's away game at Ibrox against Rangers. Um, uh, the Celtic women's match yesterday afternoon was live on TV and I had a really good time watching the game. I thought it was actually very high quality football, particularly in the first half. Um, second half, bit more of a negative ba battle uh, with the two teams uh, trying very hard, but the defence is on top. Thought actually this was Elena Sadiku's uh, best uh, team performance since she took over at the start of the year. And it does look like uh, uh, week by week, game by game, the girls are uh, working out the changes in Sadiku's mentality. And I, for one, I'm very impressed with her tactical skills, her new ideas, and she actually does appear, unlike her male equivalent, Brendan Rodgers, uh, have worked out both uh, a system that she's happy with, but also that fits her players, and is working out week by week which players fit into which places the best. Celtic started again in a 3-4-3, three, three, uh, this time with Sydney Cummings uh, at the back instead of Chloe Craig. Not sure whether that was tactical, whether that was to give Sydney Cummings some game time, or whether Chloe is ca uh, carrying a wee injury or not. Um, midfield, we had Paolo Partido and Shane Menglu providing the width, and in the centre, Shane Menglu and Natalie Ross, and again, great performance by Natalie Ross. Up front, we had Amy Gallagher, Tash Flint, and the wonderful Kit Lefarsky. Uh, Tash Flint this time, um, while still coming back into midfield and coming back to get the ball, she also was spinning in behind and getting into uh, the box much better than she was in her previous games and I thought she was a real difference maker uh, yesterday and uh, it was definitely her best performance by far since she came back uh, to Celtic at the end of the winter transfer window. Game started uh, very attacking on both sides. Um, Celtic managing to Take the lead in the 13th minute. Uh, great 1-2 between Tash Flint and Natalie Ross. Natalie Ross then, lovely ball to Tash Flint running onto it at the edge of the box. She broke into the box, um, survived having her heels clicked um, to uh, slide the ball very calmly under the advancing goalkeeper. Um, and was a very good example of Celtic's teamwork and Tash Flint's uh, strength and very good uh, ability to finish off chances. Um, Hibbs then got back into the game nicely. Um, Celtic did look a wee bit suspect on the left side of defence, which was being um, patrolled by Sydney Cummings. And indeed, a misplaced pass by Sydney Cummings uh, was picked up, passed into um, the excellent Yurian. Bokum, a 27-year-old uh, American international, she um, uh, pushed past um, Kendrick Cummings with great pace and then an absolutely stupendous, terrific sh shot into the top corner. It was completely unsavable. I, for one, was very impressed with Bokum's performance and I think of all the opponents I've seen uh, against Celtic this season, either uh, on highlights live on TV or in the games I've actually managed to go to to watch live at the ground. I think Bokum has actually been uh, the best player that we've come up against in Scottish football. And um, if 
there was any possibility of getting her to Celtic Park and the Celtic squad next season, I would um, jump at the chance. Very impressive, fast footballer, very skillful on the ground, uh, strong in the challenge, holds off challenges very well, and an excellent finisher. And I think it was uh, a great compliment to Celtic's uh, back three that Bokum only scored one goal. Uh, she was a constant threat in the first half and the second half. And as I said, um, looked uh, the best player I've seen Celtic play against this season, better than the uh, Rangers players and better than the Glasgow City players up front. Moving back to the game, um, Celtic uh, managed to regain the lead in the 31st minute. Um, a ball from a corner was cleared out back to Shane Mengu on the edge of the box on the left-hand side. She then hit a wonderful pinpoint cross to uh, Caitlin Hayes, who rolled up, rose above the defence and uh, headed the ball forcefully past the Hibs goalkeeper. Quite impressive because Caitlin Hayes had two big bumps and bruises on her forehead from previous challenges, uh, but it didn't seem to affect her ability to direct the ball uh, with a lot of force and accuracy past the Hibs goalkeeper. and was a very impressive, typical Celtic uh, goal from set pieces and corners. Celtic then uh, carried on being in uh, the uh, dominance for the rest of the half. Uh, controlling midfield, uh, particularly Paolo Partido down the right-hand side, a regular threat. The movement of Kit Lefarski and Tash Flint uh, very much disrupted um, the Hibs' defence. thought Amy Gallagher had her poorest game so far that I've seen for her this season. She seemed a wee bit lost in the current formation and wasn't really at her best. And I think Celtic did look a bit stronger once Jenny Smith came on in the second half to replace her, and also uh, I thought the midfield tightened up nicely when Colette Kavanagh came on towards the middle of the second half, and so they did look a bit more solid in central midfield, although a wee bit less creative after Shen Mengyu went off. Kit Lefersky also came off uh, around midway through the second half, Coming on to replace her was Murphy Agnew. Not so much of a threat up front and not quite such a mobile player, but a very clever um, attacking midfielder. And again, I think it gave Celtic different options uh, after that. But also, for me, one of the key things going into the Rangers match next Sunday is that Kit Lefarski appears to be back near to full fitness, back to near her full pace. And I can really see her troubling Rangers' rather square, static defence next week, assuming that uh, um, she re uh, remains fit throughout this week's training. So just towards the end of the uh, first half in the 43rd minute, again, uh, another uh, set piece, corner into the box. Uh, Caitlin Hayes headed the ball back across the goal. Um, picking out Tash Flint on the edge of the six-yard box. Um, her slightly mishit shot into the ground, uh, bounced up in front of the Hibs defender, who sliced the clearance into the top of the net. Some sites have given it down as an own goal by the Hibs defender, Notley. Other sites have given it as a second goal for Tash Flint. don't think it's massively important. Either way, the key thing was that uh, it gave Celtic a well-deserved 3-1 win going into the uh, lead into the second half. As I said, in the second half, Chloe Craig came on uh, to replace Sydney Cummings. I thought Sydney looked even stronger in defence, and I think Clark, Hayes and Craig are a very strong de defensive partnership. Uh, and hope those three are the starting back three in the game against Rangers next Sunday. And we'll come back to that at the end of the video. There's a brief preview of the Rangers match next Sunday at Ibrox, which will be live on BBC television in Scotland and the sports website. So, as I said, second half, a bit more negative, a bit more of a battle in midfield. Neither team 
really getting far uh, far forward. No real great chances in the second half for either side. Kelsey Doherty uh, did her usual um, uh, long spells of inactivity and then uh, good marshalling of her defence. Um, Celtic still looking a wee bit nervous, distributing the ball um, from the goalie to the back three. Uh, that is improving uh, little by little. Um, and I think there are lots and lots of very positive uh, things going forward. And as I said, I think this is probably Celtic's best performance under Alina Sadiku as the head coach. Um, and I am very hopeful going into the game against Rangers at the weekend. Rangers do seem to have a wee dip, of, dip in form in that they uh, struggle to beat Hearts in the last fixture midweek and only won that game goal one nothing, and then drew 0-0 with Party Thistle, who uh, are a good team but not a great team. And indeed, um, reading the uh, BBC Sports website comments, it did look like Party Thistle were a wee bit unlucky to have what seemed to be a good goal disallowed by the referee. Otherwise, Rangers may well have lost that match. So, lots of good things going into next uh, weekend's match on Sunday. Uh, Celtic looking like they're uh, getting their teamwork, their formations and their players all into the correct orders. Looks like the tactics are working better and better, that Alina Sidiku's new ideas are being adopted and worked on very well by all the players in training. I think Tash Flint is up to her full match fitness now, which I think is very important for the game next Sunday, as is Kit Lefersky. Um, and uh, for me, uh, Celtic's team for next Sunday should really be in the 3-4-3. Question is whether we should go for more of a defensive midfielder with the ability to tackle, such as Colette Kavanagh, alongside Natalie Ross, with Menglu and um, Partido out wide, although I would actually really like to see uh, Maria McEnany out wide on the left for Celtic. I think she's actually been a very important player. Other option could be Shen Meng Gu in central midfield as it was yesterday against Hibs. The game that I watched between Celtic and Rangers in the League Cup semi in Airdrie a few weeks ago. Uh, Shen was kind of out-muscled and out-fought in central midfield. Um, and so I do wonder about Colette Kavanaugh Another option, which might be slightly more risky, would be using Chloe Craig or Caitlin Hayes in central midfield, again, to try and use their strength and very good defensive abilities, whilst also having very good ability to find a pass. Another option for Celtic, which also would make sense with Sydney Cummings having had 45 minutes yesterday, um, and that means that she's uh, fully match fit, fully ready uh, if we did move Chloe Craig or Caitlin Hayes into uh, central midfield to partner Natalie Ross, who for me at the moment is undroppable. Um, other wee question is whether we keep going with Amy Gallagher up front or whether we use maybe Murphy Agnew on that side with her ability to drop back into midfield. Um, other options might be using uh, Jenny Smith or even Shane Meng, Meng Yu in that position. And so I think there are several options for Celtic. But for me, we need to have Hayes, Craig and Clark uh, in the team at the back. Kelsey Doc Doherty in goals, Nat Ross in the middle, Paolo Partido on the right with uh, Flint and Lefersky up front. And then down to the judgment of Sudoku over the week's training as to whether she goes with Colette Kavanagh or one of the central defenders in midfield and who she chooses to be out wide on the left and who she chooses to be on the right side of that front three. 
Either way, I think Salah's got good strength and depth, good ability to take players off the bench as subs and change the game. And you know, lots of players can come on and inject pace and skill and goal scoring threat. So very positive now about the game against Rangers on Sunday, which a couple of weeks ago I was much less positive about. So that finishes off this wee video about the Celtic women's side. For anybody new to the channel who uh, enjoyed this video or enjoyed the coverage of the Celtics women's side, which I think is undercovered on YouTube and on the internet, um, please do click that subscribe button, get the subscriber numbers creeping back up again. And as always, do think about clicking that like button, get more coverage of the Celtic women's side on YouTube and also very happy to read any kind of comments regarding the Hibs match, Celtic women's side as it is at the moment and also your own thoughts regarding the vital game at Ibrox against Rangers women next Sunday. So for today, uh, thanks for watching and listening, uh, goodbye and hail, hail.